good. So far, so good. Now, as discussed in the introduction, to complete our analysis of aggregate output determination, we need to introduce another market that produces an additional relationship between aggregate output and interest rates, the money markets. The market for money fulfills this function with the LM curve. When the LM curve is combined with the IS curve, a unique equilibrium that determines both aggregate output and the interest rate is obtained. Through cross model and IS curve, you have only seen a basic and extended version of goods market equilibrium. Now, let's analyze the equilibrium in money market. Just as the IS curve is derived from the equilibrium condition in the goods market, that is aggregate output equals aggregate demand, the LM curve is derived from the equilibrium condition in the market for money, which requires that the quantity of money demanded equal the quantity of money supplied. The main building block in analysis of the market for money is the demand for money. The demand for money in real terms depends on income Y, that is aggregate output and interest rates I. Let's ask Shashank how increase in his personal income affects his demand for money. Because of increase in personal income, firstly, we will buy more goods and services for ourselves and our family to improve our living standard and hence will demand more money. Secondly, as we are wealthier, now we will be looking to keep more cash in our wallet to sync with our new status which will again result in increased demand for money. Now let's join Mr. Karthik to get more clear inputs. You remember we have discussed the relationship between interest rate and investments and expenditures. Let us ask Mr. Karthik and Shashank how increase in interest rate affect their demand for money. As explained earlier also, if the interest rates are high in banks, the incentive to invest in machines and billings is less as compared to keep the same money in fixed deposits. So, if the interest rates are high, no plasma TV, no house, no loan. The only thing which is S is fixed deposits. So, the demand for money is positively related to income, that is, aggregate output, and is responsible for shifts in the curve. And the demand for money is negatively related to interest rates and is responsible for movement on the same curve. Now, let us look at the supply side of money. For the time being, let us assume that the supply of money is fixed in the economy in the short to medium term and that it is fixed by the central government. Now, let us look at how the money demanded and money supply reach equilibrium. The level of interest rates is determined by equilibrium in the market for money, at which point the quantity of money demanded equals the quantity of money supplied. Figure depicts what happens to equilibrium in the market for money as the level of output changes. Each level of aggregate output has its own money demand curve because as aggregate output changes, the level of transactions in the economy changes, which in turn changes the demand for money. When aggregate output is Y1, the money demanded curve is MDY1. Equilibrium in the market for money occurs at point 1 at which the interest rate is I1. When aggregate output is at the higher level Y2, the money demand curve shifts rightward to MDY2 
because the higher level of output means that at any given interest rate, the quantity of money demanded is higher. Do you see a bigger picture emerging? The link between the product and services market and the money market. The higher the output in the product and services market, the higher the money demanded in the money market. Read on. Equilibrium in the market for money now occurs at point two, at which the interest rate is at the higher level of I2. Similarly, a still higher level of aggregate output Y3 results in an even higher level of the equilibrium interest rate I3. Please note that the money demand curve slopes downward because a lower interest rate means that the opportunity cost of holding money is lower. So, the quantity of money demanded is higher. Now, let's superimpose the different interest rate positions arrived at here to the aggregate output in another graph to derive the LM curve. This graph plots the equilibrium interest rates that correspond to the different output levels with points 1, 2 and 3 corresponding to the equilibrium points 1, 2 and 3 in this graph. The line connecting these points is the LM curve, which shows the combinations of interest rates and output for which the market for money is in equilibrium. The positive slope arises because higher output raises the demand for money and thus raises the equilibrium interest rate. The LM curve traces out the points of interest rates and output that satisfy the equilibrium condition that the quantity of money demanded equals the quantity of money supplied. For each given level of aggregate output, the LM curve tells us what the interest rate must be for there to be in equilibrium in the market for money. As aggregate output rises, the demand for money increases and the interest rate rises so that money demanded equals money supplied and the market for money is in equilibrium. Just as the economy tends to move towards the equilibrium points represented by the IS curve, it also moves toward the equilibrium points on the LM curve. If the economy is located in the area to the left of the LM curve, there is an excess supply of money. At point A, for example, the interest rate is I3 and aggregate output is Y1. The interest rate is above the equilibrium level and people are holding more money than they want to. To eliminate their excess money balances, they will purchase a bond which causes the price of the bonds to rise and their interest rate to fall.